The season has finally come upon us where we get confused as to whether or not we should drink our tea iced or hot. In honor of the weather becoming as confused as I am when I try to read my astrology charts, I have 20 transitional summer to fall outfits for you. I'm not entirely sure if they're going to be visible in the video, but before you question all the blemishes on my legs, I was recently offered to the mosquitoes as their girl dinner. And I guess my blood must have been really tasty because they were really going at it. I have like 20 mosquito bites. Now I wonder how vampires would rate my blood. Um, anyway, let's get started. Of course, I'm starting off by using a literal thrift flipped former Oktoberfest, now wannabe cottage core dress, and a vintage cropped blazer. But first, excuse the excessive hair tucking, I am currently growing out my bangs and they literally won't fucking stay out of my face unless I tie them like my mom used to tie my hair when I was a kid, which is not flattering, I know. Point being, all you gotta do is put the blazer on if you get too cold at night. This one's obviously for the warmer days, for those of you who get a non-existent fall and winter. I don't know if I should pity you or if I should pity myself. I'm a little jealous, I'm not gonna lie, because I love warm weather. I think it's a very cute combination, though let's be real, the chances of me wearing heels in New York City are very low. Most days, I prefer to choose life and not breaking my ankles. So you know how we just had the Euro summer fashion trend? Well, let's not forget about the classic sweater around the shoulders trick that most European countries have adopted in some form or another. Basically, the sweater acts as a classy prop for your outfit until you actually need it. In which case, you can just simply put it on. Voila! This is literally the easiest concept to copy and paste across different outfits, and it helps you avoid having to carry your sweater in your arms all day. Here's a trick for my colder climate friends. If you don't want your top to be too hot, you can focus your heat source on your feet. Oh ho ho, so smart of me. You could go hardcore like in my example and wear boots beneath or on top of your pants or just wear ankle length boots. We could keep it like this or add a little bit more heat by adding an oversized button up on top. I'm telling you, button ups are staple transitional items to have in your closet because they're classy yet lightweight. And if you live in a place like New York City, it's also a great subway shirt. Unfortunately, subway shirts are a thing here thanks to patriarchy and the subway rats that we call men. Now this one's for my artsy friends who just love a comfy fit that keeps you warm while still adjusting to the changes in weather. The dungarees are not only functional but also cute, look at these! While a turtleneck and boots actually keep you from freezing your bum. In all realness though, I'm not even sure if this contraption is called dungarees, overalls, or a jumper, and upon googling it, I got even more confused. Either way, a cute outfit, it feels kind of Wes Anderson-ish, I think. I am once again utilizing the sweater trick, this time in a dress format, and I am once again getting real fucking frustrated with my hair having a will of its own. Oh boy. Like with the previous version, you can wear the sweater over your shoulders, carry it in your arms, or even potentially tie it around your waist. My pro tip is to match your socks and accessories with your sweater if it's a contrasting color from the rest of your outfit, just so it all ties in together despite the difference in colors. Also, putting the sweater on really transforms the feel of this outfit. It kind of gives off the unbothered Pinterest girl with an effortless outfit vibe. I mentally can't give off this vibe though because I am not an unbothered Pinterest girl. I am an anxious, overdressed thin in a city full of extroverts. Here's a simple outfit for my minimalists. Layering can be difficult if it's not something you're used to, but if you stick to a basic denim on denim combo, it's a little easier. Also, excuse the very poor attempt at shoving my denim jacket into the tote bag, that was not supposed to happen. Speaking of tote bags though, if you don't like any other forms of carrying your extra layer around, tote bags and backpacks are great and let you keep your hands free for… Uh, whatever you need your hands for… I swear for me, it's just to push my hair out of my face. So I already talked about the diversity of cardigans in my last video, but I bet you weren't expecting me to bust them out again! Joke's on you, I'm broke and I reuse all of my clothes. Anyways, I am once again imploring you to make use of your cardigans. This example would be better with a long sleeved one, but I don't have any so you can just take this as an example. Also, I don't know why the fuck this Uniqlo shirt simply refuses to do the basics that a Uniqlo shirt is supposed to do, which is keep its shape and form. I got 99 problems and this collar is one of them. Literally nothing I do can fix this collar. 
Remember, ladies, if it can't be fixed, throw it in the bin and get a new one. And y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. This one's like something straight out of the cat returns because not only does my outfit have a slight resemblance to Haru, the main character, but I also happen to have a curious kitty of my own. I think Cool is more handsome than the Baron, but I also didn't have a crush on Baron as a kid, and I am Cool's human mom, so I'm biased. Let's just stop for a moment though and think about that fact that Baron was a cat and most of us still managed to have a crush on him. Okay, before I start a debate about the hottest Ghibli men, of which half are literal boys by the way, so Howl and Ashitaka automatically win, let's move on to the next outfit. Now what if you want to wear something with sleeves but don't want it to cover up the rest of your outfit? This cropped blouse is a great way to add some warmth to your outfit without it being overwhelming, especially if you tend to overheat quickly like I sure as hell do. For the sake of retaining the chance of optional layering, you can choose to wear the outfit with just the crop top or with the blouse layered on top. You're not only showing off the outfit in its entirety without it being covered by your extra layer, but you're also providing that extra warmth to your arms. Also, is it just me or is this one giving off too many different vibes at once? Like I can't decide if the hills are alive to the sound of music or if I'm attempting a K-pop dance choreography. Hypothetically, let's say you're as insane as me and you own a dress in a pretty thick layer like denim. These are great for transitional weather because they're warm enough by themselves without much added layering, thus removing the need of bringing excess layers with you. And also, let's be real, this looks like some dope Pinterest girl outfit and I am here for it! She is cute, she is cool, she is everything I wish I were on a regular basis. I definitely look like I'm about to go buy a $10 latte and then go roller skating in Central Park. Here we have another button-up look that focuses on simple layering and accessorizing. The button-up and socks act as the warmer counter pieces to the slit skirt and tank top. I wanted to try making this skirt feel a little edgier as I usually style it hyper feminine. I think it kinda works but honestly I'm starting to look like a character from Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. No, the more I look at it, it really looks just like a dollar store cosplay outfit. Anyways, uh, you could also button up just the top button for an even cooler effect making you look like a main character's sidekick because that's what we all want to do, we want to look like a main character's sidekick. Just because it's fall doesn't mean you need to say goodbye to your summer colors. These blue pants are actually very light and airy so pairing them with a sweater isn't going to be a problem. I know technically the trending fall color is red but you can't keep me away from my favorite color and all five of my blue sweaters. And besides, who even decided that colors are trends? I find that to be the most absurd thing. Like, please, let's just all like the colors that we like. Anyways, you know, the longer I look at this outfit, the more I feel like I'm starting to look like a smurf. But like a cool smurf? And I may or may not have just injured my shoulder blade while attempting all of these stupid moves. Uh, stupid Yimmy, you really shouldn't be doing those dance moves. Especially since your bones keep cracking and you're getting older. Oversized sweater vests. Oh wow, that's a tongue twister. Anyways, oversized sweater vests are one of my favorite transitional pieces because they keep you warm but they're not overwhelmingly hot like sweaters. This outfit is a classic of mine but I added the blue ribbons and bag to make it a little bit more fun. Or so I like to tell myself at least. Honestly, I think I'm just looking for an excuse to bring blue into my outfit again. I'm doing it subconsciously at this point, I swear. Also, I don't know why I'm straight up dancing in this clip, I apologize, I think I was listening to Jungles back on 74 on repeat. If someone told the 15 year old me that I would be wearing shrugs as an adult, I would probably have gasped and slapped them across the face because the 2010's shrug fashion damaged my brain permanently. This one's pretty cute though as it only goes around the arms and is better for days when it's not too cold. Also, I'm fully aware this is not in fall colors, but I'm not going to stop wearing my cute pink dresses just because fall is coming. I think this F is very cute though, I'm sure the subway rats would approve. You know what, disregard what I just said because I felt like you guys deserved some darker outfits too. This is the outfit I'd wear just to one day have a girl in a subway car look at me and say, I like your style. I think at this point I'm just trying to convince myself to believe I'm cool enough to pull off outfits like this. Also, apologies for not showing off the backside of the outfit, but it turns out the camera got a fuck ton of footage of my actual cheeks out and I wasn't trying to scare you guys away with that footage. 
Oh, you thought I was done with the oversized shirts? Nuh-uh, I will make you sick and tired of them. Though I must admit, half of these are actually my partners, and he has no idea I'm using them for this video. Also, how very rude of Paws to not come sit on my lap, even though he got an official invite. I've recently renamed him Paws the Pootie, because these days when I edit my videos, he comes to sit on my lap and then he just rips one. And it smells so foul. TMI pet stories, folks. Anyways, this Moomin shirt represents my general attitude during this wonderful Mercury in retrograde. I don't know much about astrology, but I know that as a Virgo, I'm supposed to be suffering literally until the day of my birthday. So that's fun. Basically, this outfit is just me representing the mood of this season for fellow Virgos. RIP, folks. Let's try to survive. So you know how in 2020 there was this obsession with oversized sweaters with the collar cutout shirts layered underneath them? Well, this is the same concept except reversed. I'm getting to utilize my summer shirt and shorts while staying warm thanks to the boots and the cutout shirt. I like this combo especially because like with the shrug, the shirt doesn't take away from the rest of the outfit. Obviously, this outfit works better for warmer weather, but you could always add a light coat on top if you wanted to make it more fall weather appropriate. And this one is also mosquito approved for their girl dinner. I know because I wore these shorts when they got their free food courtesy of me. This is what I would call one of my very many attempts at being a wannabe coquette girly. This feels like something Cher from Clueless would wear, so maybe I was unconsciously channeling that 90s popular girl look. I actually have no idea about that because I think my sister was a popular girl in the late 90s. But when I was in school, I was just a universally bullied girl. Like, even those bullied by the bullies bullied me. It was very baffling. Okay, that's enough trauma dumping on YouTube. Anyways, the warm fuzzy cardigans and tights make the outfit warm and easily wearable in this shifty weather. This one's for my video game geeks and comfy attire friends. Of course, I found an excuse to showcase my Final Fantasy X shirt. That game is what got me through some very dark times in my youth. And I also recently went to see the Final Fantasy concert in New York City, which was so amazing. And my friend watched me cry so hard that I looked like somebody punched me in the eyes. Now erase that from your memory and think about the fact that the sheer turtleneck provides a bit of warmth, but not exceedingly so. And the joggers are made of light material, so they're comfy and breathable. Also, not me straight up almost breaking my ankle on camera. Gosh, yummy, do better. The final outfit is my cottagecore girly attempts to look city chic outfit. Excuse the extremely strange footage. I think at this point, the two hours of filming fatigue was really kicking in. And um, yeah, I have no excuses. My last brain cell was working really hard not to die on me. Also, I have a feeling this is when I started getting sick because voiceover Yemi is literally struggling with sneezing every two seconds right now, if you couldn't already tell. In fact, I think I'm about to get another sneeze. Oh, okay, we're good, we're good. As you can see, just like the weather, the tea that was originally hot at the beginning of this video is now cold and we have come full circle. Here's a cheers to us finally entering the much anticipated fall season. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm sending you my love. And as always, I'll see you next time.